experience where we explore ideas and people, good and bad, to see who we are and who we can be as human beings. On this episode of Extremes of the Human Experience, we will be discussing Juan Pujol Garcia, or the greatest spy to have ever lived. Juan Pujol Garcia, born in Spain in 1912, developed a hatred of both the communism and fascism he witnessed during the Spanish Civil War. When World War II broke out, he decided to become a spy for the Allies so that he could, in his own words, do something for the good of humanity. He approached British intelligence agencies on three separate occasions, but having no prior experience in espionage, nor any skills that would lead one to believe he would be any good at it, they rejected his offers. Taking matters into his own hands, he created a false identity as a Spanish government official sympathetic to the Nazi cause, and, with the use of falsified documents, was successful in infiltrating German intelligence. Although he was tasked with moving to Britain and recruiting other agents, he instead moved to Lisbon, where he conjured false reports and recruited agents who, in fact, did not exist. Pujol would eventually conjure 27 fake intelligence agents in total, all of whom were paid by German intelligence. He would blame these poor imaginary sub-agents for inconsistencies or false intelligence in his reports. His fake intelligence, though, was so convincing that when uncovered by British intelligence agents, an MI5 search was launched to capture the supposed German spy. After approaching the United States with yet another offer of espionage, and now with proof of his ability, he was passed onto and recruited into MI5 as a double agent. After the extent of his imagination and ability to deceive were uncovered, he was given the codename Garbo after famed actress Greta Garbo, so convincing were his actions. In total, Garbo wrote 315 coded letters to the Germans, some complete fiction, others with valueless but true information, and others still with invaluable but delayed military information, a fact he would blame on the inconsistent wartime post office system. On one of his reports, he received a reply back stating, we are sorry they arrived too late, but your last reports were magnificent. In another, when one of his fictitious informants failed to report readily available intelligence regarding a major fleet movement, he convinced the Germans that the spy had fallen ill and died, placing an obituary in the local newspaper and sending it with one of his later reports. So convincing was Garbo that he was even able to persuade the Germans to pay a pension to the fictitious agent's fictitious widow. Undoubtedly, though, Garbo's greatest achievement came in his contribution during Operation Overlord, or the Battle of Normandy, in which the United States successfully invaded German-occupied Western Europe. Garbo played a crucial role in Operation Fortitude, the plan of deception meant to manipulate Germans into believing that the invasion was happening instead at the Strait of Dover. When the invasion did actually happen at Normandy, he was further able to convince German high command that this was merely an Allied diversion, thus stopping Germans from sending reinforcements. This deception was supplemented by fake planes, inflatable tanks, and fake radio chatter, all of which tricked the Germans into believing that the real invasion had not yet happened and would not happen at Normandy. So completely had he deceived German intelligence that an intercepted German message during the ruse stated, All reports received in the last week from Garbo's undertaking have been confirmed without exception and are to be described as exceptionally valuable. This complete credulity in the German high command that Garbo was able to create led Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, the German commander-in-chief in the West, to refuse to allow General Erwin Rommel to send further divisions to Normandy. Later that month, Garbo was arrested by British intelligence in order to maintain his safety and cover a move that worked so well that Garbo was awarded the Iron Cross second class for his efforts to the German cause, a distinction requiring Hitler's personal authorization. He also received an MBE from Britain for his exploits as a double agent and may be the only person to have ever received both. After the war, fearing reprisal from surviving Nazis, Pujol fled to Angola and faked his death from malaria. Little is known about the ensuing decades of his life, and he resurfaced only after an enterprising British politician 
was finally able to track him down in 1984. When asked about his exploits, he said he knew that he had a great impact on the war, but felt he could have done even more. It is impossible to know the extent of the impact that Juan Pujol Garcia had on World War II. He undoubtedly saved tens of thousands of Allied lives through his deceit, and some historians have speculated that he shortened the war by at least three years. In total, he and his imaginary spies were paid over $330,000 by the Germans. Pujol died in Caracas in 1988, age 74. Thanks for watching. If you want to see other videos about the people and ideas that make up the extremes of our human experience, like and subscribe for more.